Hi, Redheaded Riding Hood here, Red for short. I'm going to read you William Barclay's Daily Celebration. This is Unity, Part 2. The summer school I mentioned yesterday was founded on personal relations, was founded on personal relations. For me, the most interesting part was when we talked late and argued late. And when mine sharpened mine as iron sharpens iron. That's a Bible verse. Here again, there is a notable blurring of differences. There is a new willingness for Roman Catholic for the Roman Catholic to talk with Protestant and for Jew to talk with Gentile. There is a new willingness at least to try to understand each other a little better. Scholarship, prayer, human relationships brought us together, but we knew, however, that there was a limit. The sacrament was never celebrated. This makes me think if this was kind of one of those retreats, like um, I, I, we went on one once, which was called, I forget what it was called. It's funny, I remember my, my, my cousin, who's Roman Catholic hers, was called Cicero, and I can't remember what the one I went to was called. Tres Dias, that's what it's called, three days. It's called Tres Dias. I'm wondering if it was something like that because that's like an ecumenical thing. And, but you usually do take the sacrament. Um, but it was, it was criticized by um, some, some people in my Baptist church in Georgia. This was in the like late 1990s and early like 2000 maybe. Um, we switched from that church to the other Baptist church in 2002. But um, so it was like the late 90s and we went to this thing called Trace Dias. But I think we didn't go to it until we went to the other church. But it was criticized in that church by a pastor who said it was Catholic and he didn't like it because <laughs> it was Catholic. And um, he thought taking, he thought, taking the, the Eucharist was evil or something. So, and he thought it was Catholic, so therefore it was bad. Um, so I'm wondering though, cause I'm wondering about what this school is he's talking about. It's curious. What then keeps us apart? I think we could all call the separating force ecclesiasticism. Okay, I had to read, had to look this up. And that's why really this, well, I'm, been procrastinating today, so that's why I'm late, but also I was looking up this word, and I even looked up, I have my computer here, because <laughs> I film on my phone. Ecclesiasticism. <laughs> it even pronounces it for you. Okay, ecclesiasticism. And in ecclesiasticism, I see four things. Ecclesiasticism is worshiping systems more than worshiping Jesus Christ. Ecclesiasticism is limiting, limiting the operation of the grace of God. Ecclesiasticism is making the tradition of the past more determin, determinative than the need of the present. present. Ecclesiasticism is holding an exclusive rather than an inclusive view of the church. Today, there is more hope than ever. There was a real unity. It is the ordinary members of the church who can make that hope a reality and who can provide the leadership which the ecclesiastical hierarchies have failed to supply. Interesting. And the, the, the sample sentence here is the ecclesiasticism that so often gets in the way of the gospel. So, again, very interesting, makes you think, <laughs> makes me wonder what this um, school, this thing he, was that he went to. Um, I maybe could look it up because um, he lived in Scotland 
in you know the 1960s and 1970s and so maybe I could look it up and find out more about that but it's really interesting gets you to think and so I hope you I hope you like me reading this I'm I'm enjoying it so I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep doing it until I um, finish the year out which will be in December because I, I think I started reading these in December so don't say that no one cares for you because I do and God does too. Don't forget to pray for Red because Red is praying for you. Bye.